Thank you for joining episode two of DQ Debrief. We are about to debrief about Patrick Considine, a 16 year old who has dyslexia and dyscalculia, and he's gonna share his story. I have actually never interviewed um, a high schooler before, so I'm super excited. And what I love is how Patrick has been an avid follower and engages in like most of my posts and has brought some realness to the table about what his teachers are and aren't doing. And I think, you know, what's missing sometimes is that is that component. We um, we need kids to, to get on these platforms and talk about their experiences and to really educate the, um, the folks out there, you know? So I'm really excited about this. I hope I do not have the same situation as I had last Time. I'm gonna see if I can invite him in. Oop, did I just see him pop on? Here we go. All right, Patrick, I'm going to invite you. Here we go. All right, let's do this. Hello, how's it going? Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm great, very excited. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, definitely. Can um, I'm trying to see your lighting. We can't really see you that well. Is is there a way? Maybe could you turn it a little bit so we can see your face a little bit better? Oh, yep. so much better. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Good. <laughs> so I am. I've got to say, guys. I was actually just saying, Patrick. I don't know if you heard this. I've never had a high schooler on my platform share their story. So. I really feel like this is going to be such a powerful conversation. It will be. And I, yes, and I know that we've been talking about this, and I was letting everyone know how much of an avid, like, you're, you're just an avid ad advocate. I mean, you are just putting information out there. You're commenting on my post. You're talking about what your teachers are doing or not doing. And I just, I just want to give you a platform to really talk about your story. All right. So... I know that you're probably a little nervous and that's totally understandable, yeah. but I want you to kind of share with us. So you um, have had special ed services since you were in kindergarten, right? Yeah. yeah. So can you talk to us? Oh, go ahead. My kindergarten entrance was delayed. I found that in an evaluation in the past. Wow. Okay. So, so start, so start us off. Tell us about what, what you remember as early as kindergarten and your special ed journey. Um, definitely pulled from classes a lot. Yeah. Very far behind in many things. And so when you were, so do you remember when you were in kindergarten, like what that felt like being pulled out? Um, not really, honestly. I never really cared or knew why. I was too young to understand what was going on at the time. Right. Did you, did you have a sense, did you have a feeling something wasn't right though? Yes, a, a lot. Yeah, something wasn't right. Was it more of, um, how do I word this? Was it more of like you didn't feel right within or were you noticing socially other kids weren't being pulled out and they were getting things quicker than you yes. were? I, I've sensed all that. I've always noticed that like throughout school. <laughs> and you know what? I have, to, I have to pinpoint on that. Sometimes teachers feel like kids don't know. They know. I mean, they know as early as, as you said, kindergarten, first grade, that they're different or that they're not reading or picking up things as fast as their peers. And that's really important to touch on that social emotional piece, right? Like, how did that impact you as you went on in your elementary school career? Self Say that again? Self-esteem. <laughs> um, lacking motivation. Well, I, mean, I don't think I lack motivation as much anymore <laughs> if I'm like being able to advocate. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, no so, one in my school. I'm the only one, people say. You said, say that again? I'm the only one like who advocates for like stuff in my IEP in school. So tell tell us a little bit about why that is. Was, is that something your parents have instilled in you or it's just a drive you have? The drive I have? No, my parents never cared to make sure that was followed or anything. It's all me. Wow. Okay, we got to explore that because yeah. usually <laughs> it's the parents that are like, Oh but, yeah, that's that's what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. Yeah, yes. But I think, like, by this age, it's up to the kids. <laughs> well, and so here's the thing. So let me give the audience some context here. So I used to, um, I used to teach eighth grade in public schools. Right. And 
in the public school system, I would always prepare the kids for their transition meetings to high school. And so legally, at least in the state of Maryland, I don't know what it's like in Ohio, but once a kid turns 14, they can be an active participant in their IEP meetings. Right. My son's coordinator okay. told me that recently. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like a lot of people don't tell kids that. And it's I think it's twofold. I think it's because they feel, whoever they is, whether it's parents, whether it's teachers, they feel that you guys don't know what you need. They feel that let the adults take care of it. But I always came from the mindset of this is your journey. This is your experience. So There's you have to be the one to drive that. Yeah. Well, more importantly, it's their disability. So that... It's it's not there. It's not the parents. It's up to the kids. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. And I think Patrick, what I love is the fact that like, well, how? Let me ask you this: How old were you when you realized you had to advocate for yourself? Um, sixteen this year. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's when you were. So what? So what was that turning point for you that you were like, enough is enough? Um. When I realized, like, I'm still, I still seem like far behind in a lot of things. <laughs> right, right. When I th that there's like a lack of progress, and you know, I'm not up to grade level in certain like math, but bit far behind. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, like I noticed, like when there's like a lack of like there's many gaps in skills I could have obtained in early elementary if someone advocated for me. <laughs> Because uh, just putting someone on an IEP doesn't like guarantee that you're going to have teachers who are going to follow and abide by that or know how an IEP works. You are absolutely right. Yeah. So, do you, so did your parents get you any math tutors or anything like that along your journey? No. All I got was um, I had speech therapy and occupational therapy through kindergarten through fourth grade, which okay. I that didn't really benefit from. I think... I think we were focused on the wrong things at the time. Yeah, it sounds like it. So for, for everyone out there who's not aware, SLP yeah. is speech language pathology, and then OT yeah. is occupational therapy. Yes. Why were you, why did you have OT? Um, Cause I, I lack fine motor skills. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, okay, this is really, I, I'm loving this. And I know we haven't had this conversation, which is why I love having these live raw conversations because it brings out so much. And look at all this engagement, Patrick. We are getting yeah. so much engagement here. This is what I'm talking about. This is putting a spotlight on you like <laughs> being such an advocate. So, okay, I want to really explore your dyscalculia. So we were talking a little bit about your so the way I marketed this conversation is you're a dyslexia advocate, but you were telling me really you're more you have more dyscalculia, or is it equally both? Do you think? Um, more dyscalculia, definitely. Pa, tell us more about what that looks like for you. What? How does your dyscalculia come up in your everyday life? Um, when I can't estimate time, or when I don't. <laughs> when I don't recall like a math concept taught to me like hours later. <laughs> right, right. Or and I, what? Plus I have no idea what just happened. Like it, it's like short term memory. It's that bad. How does your teacher, go ahead. What? No, go ahead. <laughs> How does your teacher support you? Like, are they aware of that? Or are they just kind of like, uh, Patrick doesn't get it. Let's just leave. She said, she thinks she told me one day, Patrick, <laughs> she said, I think, you have a hard time understanding <laughs> but i thought to myself how does that help me what are you going to do to help me understand right exactly you're like thanks i know that <laughs> yeah so i don't i don't my math intervention specialist i don't really know i don't think she likes me all that well <laughs> why why do you think that is well she's a math intervention specialist and she she knows i'm one of the ones with a math math related disability so of course it's going to be frustrating and that's an oxymoron, right? Couldn't be sped teachers. I've said this before. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That's an oxymoron. You go into an intervention, like a specialty to want to help, not to berate children to be like, why aren't you getting this? Exactly. Someone just said, but that's her job. And I 2000% agree. So I... First of all, I love the fact that you have the courage to come on Instagram and share your story. Yeah. Have you have you talked about your story out loud before? No. Because I, I want to like um I can't talk about it, talk about it like around family. 
they don't like they don't like hearing about it. They don't care. <laughs> so why do you think that is? Um, they just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> so I'm sure in your research of advocating, you know yeah. that these neuro-based brain disabilities are yeah. genetic. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So I'm wondering if there's something in your family where someone has your disabilities as well and they just don't want to address it. It's my, my sister has a problem with math too. So. Okay. And how does she cope with it? Um, she doesn't, she doesn't, she has no idea, huh? How old is she younger or older? She's younger. Wow. I told my mom recently, like, what if this is running in the family? What did she say? Um, she kind of brushed it off as, um, she, my sister is just bad at, like, time management and other things to, like, kind of, um, blanket up the real problems. Wow. Okay, so... See, it's, it's an avoidance of dealing with the problem. That's what I'm trying to get into. Like, that's what's happening. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not... It's something I can't change, so, like... Kind of just it's like figure it out on your own like that's that's something i was told a lot wow yeah and you know what i think i'm looking at the comments as they're coming in and <laughs> honestly patrick like this is your your you found your voice yeah i mean i think that we look to our parents for answers right and sometimes we realize our parents may not have the answers and then we have to figure out how to get the answers yeah it's like you can't expect them to know but you think like just a little bit of emotional support would be around right so you feel you don't even have the emotional support either it doesn't so how, how does that, go ahead i'm sorry it doesn't it affects me but then it doesn't because like i know i know i'm like I know I'm able to succeed. <laughs> right, right. Like, I, I can succeed without these math skills. I don't really care. <laughs> a lot, a lot of the times. Yeah, gosh, okay, so look at all these comments here. And, and like, remember, like, on a diagnosis, like, there's nothing that ever says your child can't go to college or anything like that. Whether it's, like, an intellectual disability to a physical disability, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you are so resilient. Yeah. I mean, like, just here, like... I want to point out that most 16 year olds are not saying what you're saying. Like they, they, you, you are very introspective. You're very self-aware. You're aware of the fact that you have a bright future. You're yeah. just not sure, you know, you don't know I, what that path looks I don't like. Know. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Um, probably a sped teacher. I love that. Not because one of those. You, you get it. Like, um, shows up to class late or doesn't show up at all not the one to like spend all their time socializing and just waiting for the paycheck at the end of the week not that kind of deal yeah i'm, yeah. I'm a, like helping kids with like actual disabilities getting to know the disability understand the disability <laughs> yes yes okay someone just said patrick some of the most brilliant minds were and are struggling with dyslexia you can do whatever you set your mind to and that is three thousand percent correct and i know you know that and so I think I want to touch on the um, special ed piece. Yes. So giving back, you are absolutely right. That I feel, I was actually telling my husband this the other day, because he's an educator as well. There are two types of special ed teachers. There's the one you talked about, the ones that just, you know, do whatever they want to do, wait for the paycheck, get upset that the kids aren't following through, whatever the issues are. And then there are the passionate special educators. And those are the ones that I feel through my journey have had their own struggles in school. And I can say that speaking from my own experience, I struggled in school and math was not my subject. I'm, I don't think I have dyscalculia, but I definitely think I had really a bad case of math anxiety. And so when I actually co-taught math, eighth grade math, I was so scared. I was just like, I still count on my fingers. Like, I don't know if I can really remember all those steps, but when kids it's struggled, I yeah. understood their struggle. And they liked the fact that they were like, oh, well, I don't have an IEP, but I want to go to her because she gets what I need when this teacher is just whizzing through all these math problems. That's so, what my math specialist does. Just whizzes that through. That's what my math intervention specialist does. She just whizzes through everything, doesn't check understanding, doesn't do what I wish. And 
I, I even like in the IEP meeting, I even made like a presentation on ways they can help me. So like I provided so many resources for them to help me, but they don't seem to be picking up on it. <sighs> okay, Patrick, listen. Yeah. Do not let do not let this system break your soul. I mean, the fact that you had talking points, you're like, this is what I need. This is what I need. This is what I need. And they're just not following through. Don't give up, seriously. Because that drive. I'll tell you that. Say that again. I'm very annoying purposely and willfully. <laughs> no, no, you're persistent. Yeah. You're not, you're not annoying. You're persistent and you hold people accountable. And I will tell you, when you become an adult, some people don't like being held accountable keep at it i'm serious how many of you are loving this conversation and agree with it i mean really drop in some hearts let us know i mean really I account <laughs> accountability i don't know if it gets to a point then i'll probably put then it, it, her put her in her place <laughs> she also ignores my email sometimes your your special ed team leader no, um, my oh, math, your math, your math my English one is really nice. She's newer, so she's still getting the hang of things. But we have a good connection. So let me ask you this. Your math interventionalist, is she older or younger? He's older. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I can already see, like, you know, in my head, older person might need to retire soon. You know, doesn't understand the landscape of neurodiversity. Like some people will say, you know, there weren't as many dyslexics around before. Yeah, there were. Yes, it's there, just no one there, talked about oh, it. <laughs> there wasn't like many like testing centers and all that yet. That wasn't a thing yet. There wasn't all this like screening and yeah evaluation. So, so Patrick, you told me on your IEP, what does it actually say on it? Doesn't it say SLD? Yes, it still says I, I continue to qualify for services under SLD. And then it was due to um, like a bunch of low scores and certain skills. And so for those of you out there listening, either live or later, SLD is specific learning disability. And what's important to recognize is school districts have this like loose lingo yep. under under IDEA and mm -hmm. and depending on your school district they will not put dyslexia or dyscalculia or dysgraphia there and the law doesn't say you can't and guess what SLD all dyslexia and dyscalculia and dysgraphia that's all under SLD all yeah. those are, so there's nothing yep. that I think I think what what happens is they just don't want to like deal with the real problems. They don't want to know what the real disability is. So like nobody's really getting like accurate support, including myself. Yep. Well, no, I, and you're... I can't say that. I'm getting like decent support, I guess. <laughs> but that's because you're advocating for yourself. That's yeah. And so what's important to recognize is exactly what you said. So from my experience being on the educator um, side of things and working in specialized private schools for kids with dyslexia and then public school, the reason they don't say it is because I truly 100% agree it's a money issue. Once you own it, once you say, hey guys, I think the population of kids have dyslexia, we got to put it on the IEP. That then means you have to invest money in professional development for teachers. You've got to train teachers. You've got to hold them accountable. You have to be able to provide the special ed departments with whatever services they need. It's a big issue. And that's why it's safe to just have SLD. Because, I don't know. Here's what I think. Well, let me think. I think it's more of like not wanting to like know what the disability is. Like when I talked to my spec coordinator, like they were like, it's almost like they they could have said yes, but then they couldn't. Right. Like asking you if they could like say dyslexia and then they said, no, not really. <laughs> right. But right. I felt like that yes was like coming up. <laughs> well, I think um, I'm actually, when we, when we hop off this, I'm very curious to look at the Ohio laws because there's a website guys out there called Dysle Dyslegia. It's like dyslexia, but like legislation. Oh. And so actually, actually, those of you who are viewing in and engaging every Wednesday, I have a new state. I have a state and I'm giving you the, um, the screeners and the laws for that state. So actually, I do have Ohio somewhere in queue. Okay. Um, and so so every Wednesday, guys, I'm giving you all 50. Actually, it's not 50 states. There are four states that have no dyslexia laws. It's Vermont, Michigan, Idaho and Hawaii. So all the other states have some sort of laws, but here's the, here's the tricky part. There's ways to work around it. So, yeah. so they might have screeners and they might say, oh yeah, well we can do screeners, but like we don't have to unless someone brings it up and then it's a legal issue. Well, 
my three-year ETRs coming up next year. Do you know what those are, ETRs? Are those like um, state assessments? No, it's called an evaluation team report to see if you're oh, still- Oh, yes, yes, your yeah. evaluation, yes. So let me tell you something. Um, so I did something pretty like major yesterday. <laughs> I, I somehow like got in contact with my local hospital and I got I got some medical records. I have wow. of some it says learning disability. It doesn't say which one and I'm curious as to why. So you weren't tested through so so your parents got you private testing or you were tested to your pediatrician? Yeah, I was tested by like a pediatrician, like in twenty sixteen or something like that. Okay. Okay. At the so I'm wondering like how do you let somebody diagnose you with a disability without saying which one it is? Yeah, yeah. I got, I'm, I'm thinking about like calling them. Hey, you know what? You're on a roll with your advocacy. Why not? This is you. This is your journey. This is your life. You want now, answers. I can also call the call the board of education if these if, and see if they have that um, summary of what they found from the hospital. So, Patrick, you know what I think you should do? This is just a suggestion because I see so much leadership skills in you. I think you should find other kids that are in your boat and you run some school district like group where you guys like really just rally and, and make a change. I mean, honestly, like you can make a difference. Look at what you're doing now. You're sharing your story. People are so engaged in this conversation. People are going to be viewing this later. It's going to be on my YouTube channel. I, I think why not use your disability and your drive for good? You know, but if I'm getting told I have an SLD in math, then I have dyscalculia. So if, right. if I find out what I was diagnosed with, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. And then, you yeah. know, well, so and here's I, the thing. You can offer your your um, journey of figuring this out, how you found out all of this stuff. Um, <laughs> most of it was like pushing a lot of people to give me information and researching. <laughs> You are holding people accountable. Yeah. I love it. Well, Patrick, here's the thing. So I I want to say, first of all, I really appreciate your tenacity, your bravery, yeah. your courage to, to come, as I said before, on this platform to have this conversation with me, to engage. Um, you know, the engagement, as I said, is amazing. And I hope those of you who are out there listening, either live or later, hear the impact of how when we don't acknowledge these learning disabilities, how it can impact kids. And not all kids oh. are going to advocate as strongly as Patrick. And yeah. it's, it's so critical for us to keep well, moving the needle. Let's think about like other parents' perspectives. Some parents just want their kids to have fun and not worry. But yeah. I feel like that still sets them far back because then they don't like um, get the skills that they should be getting or practice. Right. So I, I still feel like not telling like your kid what disability you have is a huge problem, even I, e even if either either because it's because of stigma or I don't or shame I don't know. It's it's probably all of the above. I mean, yeah. it really is. It's it's a lot to unpack, and I agree with you. I never understood why parents were like, "Well, we don't want to tell so and so I mean, about this IEP." You know the truth hurts, but the truth is, um, the truth is the truth. So. Yeah. Yes. Well, Patrick, listen, I love that you found time to hop on my show and I would love, I know that you have so much more to offer and yes. maybe we could get another episode in yes. at a later date, but thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in and listened and I hope everyone has a good afternoon. Yep. All right. Bye, Patrick. Bye. <laughs>